Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In the previous tutorials, we've seen how to configure Spring Beans using the Spring XML. Um, you write all the bean definitions in your XML and uh, you can define dependencies between beans and you can also instantiate new beans by doing a get bean of a bean that's defined in the XML. In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, the second way in which we can configure the Spring Beans and the dependency routing. Uh, this is by using annotations. Spring provides uh, support for annotation-based container configuration. And uh, there, are, there are quite a few annotations which cover most of uh, what we need to do when it comes to configuring Beans. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at one of them, the one of the simplest of them, which is the required annotation. So uh, let's start off with looking at what we have right now. We have um, a shape object that we are getting from uh, the Spring XML, and then we are doing a shape dot draw. And in our Spring XML, we have defined a circle to be a bean of class circle, and a circle is just a a class with a single point, and uh, it has a draw method that prints out that it's actually drawing a circle. So actually what's happening here is you're drawing a circle by getting the circle bean and then calling the draw method of the circle. So we will explore what the required annotation helps us with in the first place and then we'll look at how we can actually implement it. Now take a look at this. In the bean I have a property called uh, center, which is referring to a point A. So I have a point object, I have a point bean here, and then I'm assigning it to the center member variable of the circle class. So this has a center, and I'm assigning it to that, and then in my draw method, I'm printing out the point itself. So if I run this uh, class as it is right now, I'm gonna get a print statement here, and uh, it says the point is zero, zero, because that's how the wiring is happening here. Now what happens if I remove this property tag over here? Now let's say I delete this. So what's gonna happen is the bean definition is here. I have a bean called circle, but it does not have any dependency specified in the Spring XML. And uh, here, this property here, this property center will not be assigned a value. Now when the draw method is called, obviously it's going to give me a null pointer exception. Now let's run this and uh, see that's what's happening. Well, there you go. You have a null pointer exception in the draw method, as you can see here. Now we have a very simple application here. So this is the only line of code that uh, is using the bean that we're getting. So we know that there is a null pointer exception that's coming out of this. Uh, but if you take a real world application that has thousands and thousands of lines of code, uh, you might you never know uh, when you might encounter a run uh, runtime exception like the null pointer exception. You might have an application deployed and then days down the line you might encounter a null pointer exception because one of the dependencies were not met. Now let's say you want to validate that all the dependencies are met, all the required dependencies are met, then um, you can use the required annotation for that purpose. Now let's say in my circle uh, class, I want to let Spring know that the center point over here is required. I need to make sure that there is some kind of a bean wiring so that center is not null when the application runs. When Spring is initializing all these beans, I want Spring to validate that there is some bean that gets assigned to this center member variable. So in order to do that, what I do is I configure this class and tell Spring that this is a required member variable. I can do that on the setter. I say that this setter is required. This setter has to be run, which means that some value has to be assigned to this center member variable when the bean is being initialized. And if it's not there, then throw an exception. I don't want the exception to happen when the application code is executing and it's using this uh, member variable and then come up with a null pointer exception. I want the exception to be thrown when the application is being initialized itself so that, so that I can cache all these errors up front. So in order to tell Spring that this is a required dependency, I use the annotation at 
required. Now I will import this from our Spring, Spring Framework Beans Factory annotation. Okay, so now this tells Spring that this is a required member variable and if um, this dependency is not satisfied, Spring will not proceed with the execution of the application. It's going to throw an exception. I will save this. Now, in addition to marking this as required, and this can be any number of classes. Say I have 100 classes in my uh, application. I can mark all the required member variables of each of those classes with this required annotation, and that should do the trick. But the only other thing that I'll have to do is I will have to declare a bean post processor in the spring XML. Why bean post processor? Because it is actually a bean post processor that's doing this validation in the back end. So what's happening is spring has provided us with a bean post processor that comes out of the box and that helps us to validate all these required annotations. So what that bean post processor does is when all the beans are being instantiated, it checks for these required annotations. And uh, if it finds a required annotation that's not met, and then the bean post processor is the one that's actually throwing an exception. And uh, as we have seen earlier, all we need to do to use a bean post processor is to define the bean in the Spring XML. So let's do that here. And um, I'll have a bean tag, class equals. I need to put the entire package name and the class name of the required annotation bean post processor. And the required annotation bean post processor is actually over here. Now, if you open the beans jar, you have a factory over here, factory annotation. So you have this in the org spring framework beans factory annotation package. So you see here, you have a required annotation being post processor. So this is the class that I'll have to mention over here. So let me type the whole thing here, org dot spring framework dot beans dot factory dot annotation dot required annotation bean Post processor, and that's it. So this bean post processor has a method that gets executed on initialization of each of these beans, and that method will check for uh, the required annotation on all these uh, on all these classes. And then if it sees a required annotation that's not met, uh, a dependency that's not met, then it's going to throw an exception. So let me save this. Now we are all set. If we run this, now we should not get an error in uh, the shape.draw method. What should happen is when the bean is being initialized itself, we need to get the exception thrown by spring. So let's run this again. Notice that again, I do not have a dependency for the circle, but the circle is using that center in the draw method. And I'm doing a shape.draw earlier. This was the one which gave a null pointer exception, but this time you can see here the error is coming up in the bean initialization phase. Property center is required for circle. So this is getting caught much before the code execution. This is getting caught while the beans are being initialized. And uh, this is helpful to make sure that all our required dependencies are met. You can use this, uh, you know, in any any class where you want to make sure that the dependencies are met and you want to catch all these errors in the bean wiring much before the code executes and throws a runtime exception. So um, that's what's happening here. We have a bean post processor that's actually checking for annotations. And uh, this is the annotation that's actually looking for. So there are a lot of other annotations. We have looked at one of the very simple annotations here. There are a lot of annotations that help us to configure the whole, uh, you know, uh, wiring and the dependencies. And all this is happening through bean post processors. So this again, a first high level look. We'll look at how we can refine this configuration. And we'll also look at some of the other configurations in the subsequent tutorials.